I'm Wilden Farwell. I'm the chief medical officer at uh, Satellus. So Satellus is a company uh, that was founded by uh, Michael Rudnicki and Frank Gleason. Uh, Michael Rudnicki is a long-standing uh, researcher in satellite cell uh, biology at the University of Ottawa in Canada. Frank Gleason has been involved with uh, stem cells for many years in his uh, work as well. What Michael Rudnicki identified uh, was the role of dystrophin uh, in satellite cell uh, biology. Satellite cells are important for muscle regeneration, and Michael found that the absence of dystrophin really uh, impacted the inability uh, for muscle cells to regenerate appropriately. So he and Frank uh, then developed Satellos uh, to develop therapeutics uh, that could work on uh, this pathway to improve the lives of people living uh, with the shin and other muscle diseases. Satellite cells are cells near the muscle that are involved in creating new muscle cells. Uh, so uh, they're a form of stem cell. Stem cells are uh, throughout uh, the body in, in different uh, tissues. In muscle, uh, they're specifically called satellite cells. And so they're the type of cell that regenerate muscle, that allow new muscle uh, to form. In uh, people who don't have disease, there are actually not that many stem cells compared to the number of muscle uh, cells. One of the very interesting findings is that in people with Duchenne, what you see is you see a higher number of these satellite cells uh, than in a non-disease uh, population. So this has been one of the fascinating questions around the biology of Duchenne muscular dystrophy is just why are there more of these uh, satellite cells? Why aren't they creating more muscle? Why are people with Duchenne suffering uh, from muscle wasting? Um, and so that's one of the really important uh, questions to answer as we think about how uh, to bring effective therapies to people uh, living with Duchenne. We call the drug SAT3247. Uh, so 3247 is specifically designed uh, to inhibit AAK1. So this is a pathway uh, within the satellite cell that is involved in the appropriate division of the satellite cell to be able to create new stem cells, but also, and very importantly, be able to create new muscle cells. When dystrophin is missing uh, in the cell, the stem cells, the satellite cells, aren't able to go through this appropriate division. They make more of the stem cells, but don't make uh, the muscle uh, progenitor cells. And so what Michael Rednicki and his team identified uh, were uh, alternative pathways uh, that could be modified with different drug uh, targets uh, to allow more of this appropriate uh, regeneration. And so inhibiting AAK1 uh, was found to be a pathway uh, that would allow for the appropriate polarity, allow for the appropriate production of stem cells and muscle uh, progenitor cells. So SAT3247 works on a pathway to inhibit AAK1 to allow for the regeneration of muscle. One of the nice things about this approach is that it can be applied in all people uh, living with Duchenne. Many of the exon uh, skipping therapies are limited to these subpopulations depending upon uh, which type of mutation they have in the dystrophin uh, gene. But what we know is that in all people living with Duchenne, they're missing muscle regeneration. They're missing the ability to make new muscle. And so this pathway, by inhibiting AAK1 from uh, SAT3247, it can be applied to all mutation types. It can be applied to all ages. It can be applied uh, to different levels of baseline function. 
Uh, we do believe uh, that this is a drug uh, that may be able to be effective uh, in all people living uh, with Duchenne. And so uh, that would be uh, quite exciting. It's a pill. It's a therapy that you can take by mouth uh, and would then be able to uh, see benefit over time in the whole population. That's what we uh, expect as our clinical trials continue to move forward. What we have seen is uh, that this is a dystrophin-independent pathway. So what that means is that it could be applied to other muscle diseases. Uh, we have presented some preclinical data for FSHD. FSHD is another muscular dystrophy that has a very severe uh, phenotype. And in preclinical models, uh, SAT3247 was able to improve muscle strength. Uh, and so uh, we believe this drug could work in Duchenne. Uh, it may work in other dystrophinopathies and other diseases like FSHD. So this was a phase 1AB uh, trial. It had two primary parts. The first part was in healthy volunteers, uh, where different dose levels uh, were evaluated for safety and tolerability and to understand uh, drug concentrations in the blood after uh, the doses were administered. No uh, concerns were identified in the overall safety profile. The characteristics of the drug levels were as predicted based upon preclinical data that had been generated. A second part of the study occurred in DMD adults. Uh, so these are people between the ages of 20 and 27. They were all on steroids, but uh, none um, had received exon skipping therapy or received gene therapy or uh, these types of uh, approaches. So first of all, we evaluated safety tolerability and that too uh, was unremarkable. There were no uh, safety uh, concerns identified. We then evaluated the characteristics of the drug in the blood. And again, concentrations were similar to what was predicted, no effect by steroids. What Satellos then was able to do was to begin to see, did the drug have effect on different endpoints that matter uh, to adults living with Duchenne? Again, the five patients were between the ages of 20 and 27. So by that time, people living with Duchenne have very profound weakness. Uh, they're very dependent upon uh, their upper extremities. We know adults in particular living uh, with Duchenne often have failure of their heart. They have failure of their ability uh, to breathe. They have very significant uh, complications and weakness associated uh, with the disease. So what was assessed uh, were the different evaluations of muscle strength as well as breathing. And of note, uh, what was observed was an improvement in breathing uh, as measured by something called the force vital capacity, so the amount of air one is able to breathe. So what Satellus observed was a consistent improvement in force vital capacity over a 28-day period. So this is quite encouraging uh, to be able to see in a small data set in a short period of time a consistent improvement in an endpoint that's important to people living with Duchenne, especially adults. What was also observed uh, was an improvement in grip strength. Now, again, this is an endpoint that's been evaluated in other natural history studies. It's been evaluated in different uh, clinical trial programs. And what Satellus observed was a near doubling in grip strength within this 28-day period. What we presented at World Muscle was some additional analyses putting uh, this grip strength data in context of natural history. And what you see is that the participants, when they come into the trial, when they begin the study, their level of grip strength is very consistent with what is expected in the natural history, a very low grip strength and one uh, that is not expected uh, to improve, if anything, expected to continue to worsen. What Satellus observed was a near doubling in 28 days, and that degree of improvement was very different than what is seen in the natural history. It was uh, achieving levels beginning to exceed what is observed uh, in the natural history. So again, very encouraging, small data set, short period of time, but encouraging uh, data. And finally, what we evaluated uh, was 
were there particular predictors of the degree of benefit in hand grip strength? And so we saw that the concentration of the drug uh, in the blood was a predictor. So patients who had a higher concentration went on uh, to have greater improvement in grip strength. And patients with more muscle mass also went on to have greater improvement in grip strength. So helps us uh, think about as we continue with the program, how to evaluate uh, patients, how to uh, think about what doses uh, to evaluate. And it gives us a lot of hope uh, and encouragement to continue to move the program forward. And so uh, that is what uh, we are now uh, doing as well. Adults with Duchenne, they have very significant needs. Uh, we know uh, that they're very weak. Uh, they have heart disease. They have difficulties breathing. They need effective uh, therapies. And so we were very pleased uh, with these encouraging results uh, that we saw in uh, the phase one study. What we are now doing is we are inviting uh, those participants back uh, to restart uh, 3247, and we plan to expand uh, the number of adults uh, that we are evaluating with 3247. Uh, so we do want to continue to look and see what is the overall safety tolerability in older patients receiving 3247, and what is the potential for efficacy in uh, this patient group? We know it's a population uh, that really needs effective therapies, and, and we are committed to continue to evaluate 3247 in uh, those patients. What we've also announced is uh, that we are going to conduct a study in kids with uh, Duchenne as well. Uh, we've announced uh, that we've submitted paperwork with different regulators around uh, the world uh, to initiate a phase two trial in kids to also evaluate the safety, tolerability, the drug characteristics, but then begin to consider, can we also see efficacy uh, in this younger population? And so we will be evaluating uh, both a younger as well as an older uh, population going forward. You know, with 3247, uh, with it being an oral pill that uh, participants uh, take five days a week and then take a rest for two days, you know, we do believe uh, that this gives uh, the community an opportunity uh, to receive a convenient uh, therapy uh, that would be applied across a broad population, again, not restricted by mutation, not restricted by function, not restricted by uh, age. And it's working in a way uh, that really allows muscle regeneration to occur. Uh, this is a piece of the story that I think has been forgotten about or not been focused on with all of the other available therapies. Uh, we know dystrophin is important to membrane stability within the muscle cell. But dystrophin is also very important uh, to muscle regeneration. And without muscle regeneration, you don't replace uh, the muscle that is lost and you don't maintain the function uh, that these kids have. When you think about kids and people living with Duchenne, they gain function when they're kids. They're able uh, to learn uh, to sit, they're able to learn to stand, they're able to walk, and then they lose that over time. We know muscle can work without dystrophin. We know that it is effective without uh, dystrophin. What is missing is the ability to regenerate, to make more of that muscle. When people without Duchenne have an injury, the muscle returns. They are able uh, to make new muscle. We all have in us the ability to regenerate muscle. What's missing in people living with Duchenne is the production of dystrophin, and that results in satellite cells getting hung up and not able to appropriately make new muscle. And so with 3247, we do believe uh, that we can restore uh, that appropriate pathway to regenerate more muscle uh, that can then maintain and improve function in people living with Duchenne.